Last season, we witnessed the breakout of former 7th overall pick Lowry Markkanen, but the weird part about this was that it came in his 6th season in the NBA and on his 3rd team. In this season, Markkanen went from a typical spot-up big man to a much improved overall shot creator and overall offensive threat. Some put this increase in stats to the fact that he was playing on a bad Jazz team that allowed him to do more with the ball in his hands, but that doesn't really add up once you look at his efficiency and the way in which he was scoring points. Now in the 2023-24 NBA season, Markkanen is doing more of the same as last season, but with the Jazz likely looking to tank, there's a very good chance that we see Markkanen get traded to a better team in order to help them contend. So with that in mind, I figured I'd dive into Markkanen's offensive game, what he does well, and what he would bring to some of the teams that may be interested in trading for the All-Star. If you enjoy this type of content and are new to the channel, please like the video and subscribe. Liking the video does a ton in terms of how well it performs in the algorithm, and I'm trying to hit 1500 subscribers by the halfway point of the NBA season, and any help with that is greatly appreciated. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. To start things off, I want to talk about Lowry's abilities as a three-point shooter, because honestly, I don't think enough people talk about just how elite he is from beyond the arc. Not only is Markkanen one of the best shooters in the league in terms of his volume and efficiency, but on an all-time scale, I have a hard time finding many 7-foot shooters better than Markkanen. I'll give it more time because it's really only been a season and a half since Markkanen has made this jump, but if he stays on this trajectory, it's going to be really hard for me to say there's a better 7-foot shooter all-time than Markkanen. At the very least, he's the best in the league right now, and it's not super close. Out of all players who are 7 feet tall, only 7 of them take 4 or more threes a game. Amongst these guys, the only ones who are shooting 35% or better from 3 are Brooke Lopez, Carl Anthony Towns, Chet Holmgren, and Larry Markkinen. What separates Markkinen from these three, though, is that he's better from three than all of them aside from Towns on an efficiency scale while taking nearly double the amount of threes than the rest. Carl Anthony Towns has been considered the best three-point shooting seven-footer for a long time now, and this is deserved. However, in terms of this season, it's pretty clearly Markkanen. Towns may have superior efficiency, but I feel like if he was taking the same amount of threes as Markkanen, their shooting splits would be pretty similar. Historically, Cat has been the better shot creator from beyond the arc, but in recent seasons, their assisted percentage from three has been pretty similar. Yet, Markkanen has consistently been the better shooter. Back to focusing on just Markkanen though, what he's been doing as a shooter this season is pretty insane. It's not like he's just propping up in the corner and shooting it from there, because he's taken just 32 corner threes a season and has hit them at a 41% rate. In terms of his threes outside the corner though, he takes about six of those a game, and hits them at a 38% rate. Due to his size and the Jazz's roster, Markkanen has played most of his minutes at power forward or, surprisingly enough, center this season. Having this sort of offensive versatility with his size, the Jazz are able to run some pretty creative sets with him in the off-ball. Alongside this, Markkanen probably has the fastest trigger I've ever seen from a 7-foot player. Defenders do stick with Markkanen a lot, but because of his size and how fast he's able to get his shot off, it really doesn't matter. If defenders even give him a foot of space, he can just shoot it over them with relative ease. This would help explain why he's such a great shooter from range, despite being assisted on 96% of his threes. Take a look at some of the clips that are being played now. Almost all of the defenders are guarding Markkanen decently enough. They stick with him in the off ball and they close out pretty well but because of how fast his trigger is and his ability to shoot the occasional no-dip three, it doesn't matter. This is the kind of stuff that really separates him from other shooters at his size. This level of confidence in his shot wasn't always present in previous seasons, and it's arguably been the biggest reason for his breakout other than his obvious increased role. In terms of the other stuff Markkanen does on the floor, he's still pretty phenomenal. When it comes to the paint, he doesn't take too many shots from this area, but his efficiency is still elite. Markkanen takes just 29% of his shots from 0 to 4 feet, but hits them at a 78% rate, which is in the 93rd percentile for his position, and in terms of short mid-ranges, which are shots taken from 4 to 14 feet, Markkanen takes 21% of his shots there, but hits them at a 46% rate, which is a little above average for his position. 
While his long mid-ranges leave a bit to be desired, he doesn't really take enough of them for it to really matter because he's taken just 16 shots from that 14 to 3 point line distance all season. In terms of how he gets these points, a lot of it comes from off-ball cuts, pick and rolls, and the occasional post-up. Arkanen rarely drives from the three-point line from what I've seen on film, and instead he does a lot of work without the ball in his hands to get points down low. Markinen's also really fast for his size, and I think it catches a lot of defenders off guard, and this leads to some pretty easy buckets off cuts, and why he can also be really successful on fast breaks. There really isn't a big weakness in Markinen's overall offensive game. While he isn't a crazy shot creator from three, he doesn't need to be given how quick his trigger is and the off-ball sets Utah runs for him. This off-ball ability is what makes him so unique and valuable to certain teams. On the season, Markkanen has a usage rate of 24%, which ranks 82nd in the NBA, yet he ranks 26th in the NBA in points per game at 23.2. Amongst players who rank ahead of him in points per game, the closest guy to Markkanen in terms of usage is Tyrese Maxey at 25.4%, which ranks 66th in the league. To simplify things, Markkanen doesn't touch the ball nearly the same amount as some of the top scorers in the NBA, yet is getting points at the same rate as them while being just about, if not more, efficient. Overall, Markkanen has proved to be one of the best all-around offensive players in the league regardless of position while maintaining his status as the best 7-foot or taller shooter in the NBA. The turnaround he's had since joining the Jazz has really been one of the craziest things I've honestly ever seen in the league. Now though, with the Jazz sitting at 10 and 17, rumors about a potential trade for the All-Star are at an all-time high, and it looks like sooner than later, Markkanen is going to be moved out of Utah. One of the teams that's been reported as being interested in Markkanen and should absolutely make a move for him is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Markkanen would fit near perfectly with the Thunder as his style of play wouldn't really disrupt the flow of their offense and the shooting he'd provide in the starting lineup on top of what guys like Lou Dorr and Chet Holmgren already bring would simply just be a match made in heaven. Not to mention the Thunder have all the assets in the world to make this happen. They have Josh Giddy, who I think would fit in great with the Utah culture players like Davis Bertans for salary filler, and as we all know, a shit ton of draft pick to throw on top of all that to really sweeten the deal. There are other teams I could see being interested in marketing like the Heat or maybe even the Kings, but they don't have the assets to offer like OKC, and I really like his fit there more than the other two teams. OKC already has some really creative off-ball plays, so imagining what they could do with a shooter like Markkanen is really exciting. Not to mention, the Thunder wouldn't really see a sort of defensive drop-off by adding Markkanen to their lineup. Based on film and numbers, Markkanen is an okay defender, he doesn't really excel at too much on that end, but I have a really tough time calling him a negative. However, the Thunder have so many defensive specialists on their team and in the starting lineup to where it won't matter whether he's a good or bad defender. Markkanen will have less defensive pressure on him, which could honestly allow him to maybe even excel a little more on offense. Playing alongside playmakers like Shea while being in an overall smoother and just better offensive team like the Thunder compared to what Lowry has in Utah is really just fun to think about. There have been some reports saying that the Jazz could want up to five first round picks for Markkanen, and honestly, for a team like the Thunder, he would absolutely be worth it. This season, the Thunder ranked 5th in 3-point percentage, despite ranking 20th in 3s taken per game. So adding a guy who hits 38% of his 3s, while taking 8 a game, is going to make them one of, if not the best, shooting teams in the league. To dive even deeper, say they do throw Giddy in a trade for Markkanen, it would make their shooting even better than just acquiring Lowry straight up because of how poor of a shooter Giddy is. Not to mention that Markkanen is just a million times better as a player, person, and fit. Regardless of where Markkanen goes though, it's going to be really interesting and fun to see him in a new environment. He's been nothing short of incredible these last two seasons and has done a lot of things I don't think I've ever seen from a 7-footer. His incredible quick trigger, off-ball capabilities, and overall offensive prowess makes him a premier piece for any team looking to add some offense into their starting lineup. But with that being said, I'm going to wrap things up here. Let me know in the comments below what team you think should trade for Lowry Marketing. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe so I can reach my goal of 1,500 subscribers by the halfway point of the NBA season. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.